A patient infected with the dengue virus is not under quarantine. Governor spokesman Crystal Palco confirmed with Candid uh, that the government's crisis response team has not even considered quarantine, even though she admits the possibility that the patient's exposure to the dengue-capable mosquito means that more people can be infected. After a whirlwind day for the residents of Chalampago, Ordot, and Manilao, who have tried uh, to frustration to get answers from their government, Ms. Paco finally provided information regarding both the patient and ground zero for the potential spread of infection. The patient is a student of Agata Johnson Middle School and lives in Mangilao in an area nearby Payless Supermarket. Ms. Paco confirms that a contractor has followed a team of nurses and others from the Department of Public Health and Social Services to the area or to the residence of this young person uh, and their family and to 82 homes in a vicinity that uh, with a radius that amounts to about 200 meters. Now in researching uh, the, and when we asked Crystal Paco, we asked Ms. Paco, why 200 meters? She said she didn't know. Uh, but when we did our research about these mosquitoes, because we asked her, is this the range that the mosquitoes can fly? Uh, there are two types of mosquitoes that are capable of carrying the, I almost called it Zika, the dengue, the dengue virus. One is the Aegis aegypti, uh, which is not the mosquito that we have. The, the mosquito that you see on the screen right now is what we have. I, you, you've seen this. You guys have seen this mosquito. This is the Asian tiger mosquito. This is the mosquito that is capable of carrying the dengue virus. This is the mosquito that has been on Guam for a little bit, according to the Department of Public Health, Division of Environmental Health, Vector Control Unit. They're the ones with the million dollar uh, federally funded mosquito lab. And they're the ones who understood that this mosquito, uh, while three weeks ago um, was not carrying the dengue virus inside of it, uh, now, that, now that's changed. At least one of these mosquitoes carried the dengue virus uh, and infected a resident of Bangilao in an area near Payless supermarkets. Now, the, at the time, and Candid broke this story for you because we were very much frustrated with the territorial epidemiologist, Dr. Ann Pobutsky, for ignoring, ignoring concerns that this mosquito could land on uh, the traveler who was suspected three weeks ago of having dengue, and then it was confirmed a couple days later that this mosquito would land on that person who was not in quarantine, pick the virus up, and then transmit it to someone locally, uh, lay eggs, uh, uh, bear new mosquitoes that could that would carry the virus, and then we would be in a world of trouble. And so now the Department of Public Health is sending people out into this vicinity, 200 meters, um, a 200 meter radius from its ground zero, because that's how far this Asian tiger mosquito is able to fly. We know it's the Asian tiger, uh, and we know that that 200 meters is because of the Asian tiger, because the Aegis aegypti, which we don't have on Guam, has a flying radius of 400 meters. So this process of elimination, that's, that's how we got to that uh, non-rocket science. Now, there is a discrepancy in how the Department of Public Health uh, has been handling the situation and providing information to the public. And it's not just public health, it's also the Department of Education, which in a very strangely worded news release last night, informing the public of the fumig or no, I'm sorry, not fumigation, but the spraying of insecticide at Agata Johnston and at Ordot Chalampago Elementary School made it sound like it was some sort of standard fumigation or that uh, the Education. administrators and the teachers were gonna have parent-teacher conference last That's minute. Good. They never once said in the news release that it had to do with the dengue virus. They also said in the news release that uh, the residents within a certain radius, uh, they, their homes would be uh, uh, available 
to be fumigated if they so wished or so desired. They never said anything about those homes being in Manila. So throughout the entire day, throughout social media, throughout WhatsApp, in messages that we, we at Candid were getting, in messages that other media stations were getting, there was a panic among residents of Ordot and Chalampago because Agata Johnson and OCPES are Chalampago, are their Ordot schools. Mm -hmm. And so there was a great panic among the residents there wondering what's going on. Come to find out, confirmed later on in the afternoon, that uh, the Ground Zero was actually in Munilao, and the reason they had to fumigate or spray or whatever, uh, Agata Johnson was because this the kid is a, or the, the patient is a student at Agata Johnson, and uh, the reason they had to spray OCPES is because it's in the vicinity. So if the the student was going to school at Agata Johnson uh, and the mosquito, a mosquito, that Asian tiger mosquito bit the kid while he was at school, it could have transferred over, it could have flown over to Ordot Chalampago Elementary School as well. So the information changed very quickly from last night to this morning to this afternoon to this evening. Let's play that the first... Um, uh, interview, phone call interview we had with Jenna Blas, who is the spokeswoman for the Office of Civil Defense and Homeland Security, when we were trying to get answers this morning regarding this dengue situation. My show, I've got some questions regarding dengue. Hi, Troy, I'm sorry. You know what, there's a, a representative from Public Health for Ecologists who has prepared the dengue for media on the dengue. And I press release that was issued yesterday, mm -hmm. the number is listed on the way bottom. Do you have that now? Yeah, I have the number, but the epidemiologist has not returned our um, calls. Okay, not a problem. Is this your number that she can reach you at? Uh, yes, and this is, okay. and would the epidemiologist know things regarding the um, shutdown of Agata Johnson and OCPES? You know, I've got a point of contact from public health that'll be able to reach out to you. Is there, a, is, there, is there not a single point of contact when the Joint Information Center is activated? There is, and the number that was listed there is supposed to be a 24 7 number. I'm going to go find out exactly what's going on with that number now. Yeah, but if if that person should be able to answer. I agree, Trey, and all I'm asking now is just for a few minutes. That way we can finalize uh, a, a point of contact that can reach out to you. Okay, thank you very much. Trey, thank okay, thank you. Bye. Bye. So, <laughs> this morning, the spokeswoman for civil defense, who is the public information officer and during times of the activation of a of a crisis like this is supposed to be the single point of contact for some reason she was not made the single point of contact for this so she couldn't provide us any answers she referred us to Dr. Ann Pobutsky who yes is at the bottom of that news release as a single point of contact but Dr. Ann Pobutsky is not answering any phone calls she's also the person who prov who made the decision not to quarantine that traveler three weeks ago. The decision also belonged to the Director of Public Health, Linda DeNorsi. So I want to take you through a little timeline that shows just how ridiculous this entire thing is. On August 19, Public Health issued a news release of suspected dengue, uh, saying it was imported uh, from Yap and saying that they're awaiting some lab results. On August 20, that was when Candid made the uh, inquiry to public health about whether that patient had been quarantined to prevent the mosquito that we have that is capable of carrying the dengue from actually carrying dengue and then transmitting it to other people. That's when Dr. Ampobotsky wrote back to us and said, oh, uh, there is no need to quarantine someone whose case had not been confirmed. On August 23, in an article, uh, in a PDN article, public health says that the August 19 case uh, was not dengue fever. There's a quote from Linda DeNorsi who says, the Department of Public Health and Social Services got results back for a, success, a suspected case of dengue fever, which turned out to be negative. But then that was a Friday, that's August 23. By Tuesday, Public Health issued another release confirming a second case of imported dengue fever from Yap. In between, Friday and Tuesday, public health never confirmed that there was a first case that was confirmed. They remember they said that the first case was negative, 
But somehow that story changed and they never sent out a news release about it. So were there three suspected cases of dengue and two of them ended up being confirmed and things moved just so quickly that uh, they weren't able to tell us about the second suspected case, which ended up very quickly becoming confirmed? Or did they lie about the first one? Did they lie that it was negative? And it was really positive because on August 27, Tuesday, uh, right after saying that on Friday that that first case was negative, now they're saying there were two, there were two confirmed cases of dengue. Uh, and you know what is completely retarded about, and to talk about irony in an entire situation, is the day of the, the day of the news of the first suspected case of dengue was National Mosquito Day. Yeah, I'm not lying. It was National Mosquito. There was a proclamation and everything celebrating the mosquitoes. Good You're job. Mom? Good job, Governor. <laughs> You're just a good fucking job. You're, you're, you are like a beacon of light in this dark world, attracting all the goddamn fucking mosquitoes to this island. Now, it gets, it gets worse. This whole situation gets worse. Public health also issued, um, well, let's, they issued a news release about, uh, or a fact sheet on September 12th. This is just four days ago. Just four days ago, telling us that uh, there's no vaccine for dengue. Well, we caught them in a lie, and uh, let me just play, let me play the breaking news um, live stream that we had earlier today. This was around, what, what time would you think this was? 5 p.m. cello? Six hours ago. Six hours ago? Well, let's just, oh, don't mind the porn music. Hold on. Go ahead and cast on my screen. Be on there, September 12th. Uh, can you post that on uh, the screen, Eric, so people can see? If the, if the fact sheet, yes. The one that says that there is no oh, sorry. more information about. Okay, here we go. This is for real. Uh, have some breaking news to give to you and uh, then I'll get off camera and start preparing for tonight's show where we'll bring you even more information about the dengue outbreak on our island. Uh, the Department of Public Health and Social Services, its director, Linda DeNorsi, sent out a release. Can we, uh, or an informational thing, can we, can you post that on uh, the screen, Eric, so people can see? It's the, it's the fact sheet, yes. The one that says that there is no vaccine for dengue. So all you can see on there, September 12, updated dengue fever fact sheet for Guam. Uh, in the highlighted area, it says, while there is no vaccine for dengue fever, the people of Guam should be vigilant, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They're, they're not telling the truth. And I don't know why they're not telling the truth. And this is not the only thing they're not telling the truth about it. And when I say they, I mean the government of Guam. Can you go to the next sheet? This is from the Centers for Disease Control. The vaccine called Dengvecha, is aimed at helping children in Puerto Rico and other U.S. territories where dengue is a problem. The Food and Drug Administration administration recently approved this vaccine. It was approved. I have another uh, document to show you on May 2nd, 2019. Why our epidemiologists or our director of public health are saying that uh, there is no dengue vaccine is, is, is beyond me. There's, there's a vaccine. And not only is there a vaccine, but it was developed specifically because of the territories for Guam, for kids. This is for kids between the ages of 9 and 16. And by some accounts, uh, though we have not been able to verify these accounts, it, it's just, it's a wild, wild west of information in the government of Guam right now regarding this dengue outbreak because nobody's saying anything of any value about the dengue outbreak. Oh, here we go. Dengue vaccine globally, a vaccine to prevent dengue is licensed and available in some countries for people ages 9 to 45 years old. Uh, the World Health Organization recommends that the vaccine only be given to persons with confirmed prior dengue virus infection. The vaccine manufacturer, see, it's all there. In May 2019, Dengvaxia was approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. 
in the United States for use in children and 9 to 16 years old living in an area where the dengue, where dengue is common, the U.S. territories of American Samoa, Guam, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands with laboratory confirmed prior dengue virus infection. Uh, if you look at the bottom right-hand corner, last page last reviewed, May 3, 2019, Centers for Disease Control. So let's ask our government what the hell is going on. Hi, this is Jenna. Hi, Jenna. This is Troy Torres again. I'm live with our audience on breaking news that there, apparently, according to the Centers for Disease Control, there is a vaccine for dengue fever. Yet information put out by the government is saying that there's no vaccine for dengue. Is there a reason for the disparity in information? That's correct. We did receive notification that there is, in fact, um, that's not a given from Congress at this time. It's... Okay, so you said that the vaccine's not available on Guam yet? You know, I don't have the exact details on where the vaccine is or why it isn't available, and I'm working with public health right now. Do you know why, pub do you know why public health put out the wrong information recently? You know, I'm saying public health, they did not say that there was um, no vaccination. Oh, yes, it's in their fact sheet. It's in the fact sheet that was disseminated. Um, Jenna, you know, there's a lot of worried people, especially parents, but more so, like, there's, there's a whole lot of worried people in both Ordot Chalampago and Munilao because the information okay. coming out of uh, the Joint Information Center, it, 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 it's, it's not enough for people to understand what's going on. So where is ground zero? We understand. So we are aware of tracking all of these unverified social media posts and even the messages that are identifying Ordot Chalampago as ground zero. Um, and we are working with the government to make sure that there's no information that's been made to Is the person a resident of Manila or Ordot or Chalampago? So the person is a resident of Manila, and that's okay. why the, the activities for um, the children being treated are radio of the homes that are around that area are also being um, raised. But, okay, so Agata Johnson and Ordot Chalampago Elementary School are far outside the 200 meter radius. What is the reason for the fumigation of Agata Johnson and Ordot Chalampago? Is the Infected person, a student or a teacher, or somehow a worker you know, at both schools? I won't be able to disclose exactly if this person is a student or a teacher, um, but I, I do know that the Department of Public Health has, has identified those locations and they are part of their vector control efforts to, to mitigate the spread. Is, is someone going to provide an answer to that? Because there's a lot of people wondering what's going on. Yeah, I understand. We are receiving a lot of calls and we're trying really hard to streamline our messaging right now. Um, of course, the Joint Information Can, is it is it possible? Can people who live in these areas, if they're concerned, especially if they have a, um, a compromised immune systems, can they go to their doctor and ask for, I think it's called Deng, Deng Favix or something, it's whatever that dengue uh, vaccine is? So that, 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 again, this time it's not, we don't have that vaccination on the wall. Uh, but there are, um, there's been a lot of Is there a reason that the government of Guam didn't order the vaccine three weeks ago when there was a suspected case of dengue on the island? Well, unfortunately, I don't have the answer at this time, but again, we are working to streamline all of our messaging. We do have a release that's coming out shortly. We'll be able to provide as much information as we can. Is the governor on Guam? Uh, 
you know, I won't be able to answer that. I, I believe so. Has the governor been to civil defense to command the, uh, the response on this? I'm sorry? Has the governor been to civil defense since last night to command this incident? You know, I won't be able to speak on behalf of the governor. I know I have been out of the office uh, at different workshops and also working with the Department of Public Health, but uh, I can definitely check on that. Yeah, just, uh, you know, if you can just tell us whether the governor has been present at all at the Emergency Operations Center regarding this crisis. Okay, well, again, our, our Emergency Operations Center has not been fully activated. The Department of Public Health have stood up their incident command, and the Joint Information Center is definitely trying to assist the Department of Public Health get information out. We're working on that now, so um, I know you're on our distribution list, so we'll be sure to put out information shortly. Thank you. Where is the incident command, by the way? It's at the Department of Public Health in Mingyu. Yeah, they have their, they have their, uh, their own incident command center. Okay, and one last question, Jenna. Uh, in, in what general area of Mingyu uh, is this person a resident? You know, unfortunately, I don't have that exact location. Um, but again, this has been determined by the Department of Public Health. We're working closely with the Mingyu Lao mayor, Mayor Anson, to get all the information out to the residents that are located within that area. And, and just some messages that are coming in very quickly uh, on on Facebook and an email uh, and my phone is that there are a bunch of residents in Ordot, Chalampago, and Manilao who have not been informed of anything by the government regarding this, regarding any fumigation. Or... We have been tracking this thing, but again, there has no business, no determination made on the exact location of um, the civil ground zero. Okay, so that was... Oh, no, I, I'm just mentioning that because they released last night. So that was earlier. Wow have their homes fumigated inside and out. But what I'm letting you know is that there are some residents... Computer's residues. cramping my style. There was, so that was earlier. And then tonight, sometime around uh, 4.45 p.m., uh, Crystal Paco, the governor's uh, acting director of communications, gave us a call and provided us with some breaking news about uh, who the patient was, not the name, but that the patient was an Augusta Johnson student, that the patient... Um, uh, lives in Manilao near Payless, and that the patient was not under quarantine. Let's let's take a look at that video right now. Okay, so um, is the governor on Guam? Yeah, yeah. She leaves next week. Has for quite a few trips. Uh, uh, South throughout the U.S., Vegas is one of them. D.C. Um, she has the governor um. Has the governor been to the emergency operations center, or the joint information center? since last night on this dengue thing? Uh, she hasn't been here. I'm her proxy. I am, I am the one we, uh, myself and Director Linda Chinorsi. We're keeping her abreast of all the new updates. She's been updated out every single way. But she not, is not herself commanding this well, situation. Well, I would say that you know, we're not even, this is not a typical jig that we're used to. Like, I know you've been in the jig. We're actually operating on a public health and we'll be partially activated at this point. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're actually operating on public health, so our briefings have been at public health. Um, we don't have all the same capabilities that we do at home at. Sure. Is the governor concerned about the, well, the massive uh, confusion in the community, most especially among the residents of Orda, Chalampago, and Manila? And all, most definitely, and I think there was a lot of confusion this morning. We're trying to clarify everything. I know that there's a post right going around. I, I received yeah, it was on WhatsApp. It's forwarded to me relative to Orta Chalampago being ground zero, and that is most definitely in inaccurate. And you know, as a media professional, that social media is, is your friend, it's also your, it's, it's also your worst enemy, uh, disseminating f false news, fake news. So that's why we, we are reminding people in our joint information release number two, the first paragraph is relative to fake news, and that all information relative to dengue fever is going to come out of CHIC, sure. the information center. And I think, I think that whoever posted that out may have assumed that because of the information that came out of both civil defense and uh, the Department of Education, which marked two schools in Chalampago uh, as being targets for fumigation. And it also said that homes within a certain radius. Uh, well, definitely, okay. So, so, First off, it's not a fumigation. It's a spraying. Uh, fumigation is it's a methodology. Okay, they're well. They're they're gonna they're gonna spray insecticides to kill the mosquitoes. Okay, yes, that is correct. And so much like we kind of followed the TB protocol. So when someone contracts TB, we confirm a case. Say they go to the 
go to their teacher or student at a school. We identify the school, right? Mm-hmm. So you're familiar with that protocol. So that is the, that's kind of the, the methodology we use. Okay, so we know that the individual who has a confirmed case attends Augusta at Johnston Middle School. Okay. And because of the proximity to or to Chalampago, okay. we wanted to cover both schools. Okay, so, so it's, it's, not, it's, not that, it's not that there's a sibling or someone in the household who attends no, Orda Chalampago. No, only one confirmed case, an individual attends Agra Johnston. And this person, so it's a student who lives in Manila, because uh, Jenna told me that the, that the person lives in Manila, yeah, but doesn't know exactly. Confirmed, and that is why the Manila Mayor's office is very involved. We, we could not do any of this without him, except uh, Mayor Alan And so he's been with us every step of the way. Um, he's, offered, he's committed every, all his resources. Today, several times today, he went to the affected area. Mm-hmm. Um, just like in TV, they identify the close contact and then they work from there, right? Can, can you so, tell us whether the, whether the, the proximity or the, the, I'm sorry, the vicinity that we're talking about in Mangilao is near the area of Mariano Street and Kichichu Street near Mangilao Gardens? Can you give me a more landmarks? I'm sorry. Like uh, like in the area near uh, GW and UOG? I would say farther. Actually, it's closer to public health, ironically. So, closer to public... So, nearer to, nearer to FD? Uh, in, not on that side of the road, though. So, that's on the Payless side? Mm-hmm. Okay, on the Payless side. So, I can confirm that. Okay. But I can also confirm to you that our teams were mobilized today. Public health does have teams. Uh, they consist of nurses and... They're able to brief and uh, help residents understand and ask them whether or not they want to have their homes sprayed again. This is a vector control. We don't want the spread. We don't want breathing mosquitoes. Sure, sure, understood. And, so, and it's rainy season, so this is tough. I mean, the weather's not been in our, our yeah. favor. And so 82 homes were identified in a 200 meter radius. Um, so, has, has that student been quarantined to prevent uh, any mosquitoes, any more mosquitoes from? biting him or her and then carrying the, 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 the virus to other people? I understand that public health has put the proper controls in place. I can't speak to the specifics so. though. So we do, we do not know whether that student has been quarantined? I haven't heard the keyword yet. Okay. I'm not member because um, thank you if he was not spread from person to person. Sure, but the mosquito that, that carries, that is capable of carrying the virus, which we have on Guam, can bite the infected person and then transmit the virus that way, right? And, and that's totally possible. That's yeah. Totally possible, and that's why we have two teams. It's the one that's, you know, working on the mosquito level, the mosquito, mosquito control. So we have Tom Nijo leading that effort, and he is, you know, they're trying to, to, to find out, you know, do we have this type of mosquito? And so, so far we've had negative results, negative findings. And then we have the teams that are being mobilized going out to the residents. Again, they're all neighbors. And so that is, you know, that's, that's our benefit, that they're all neighbors. So the teams were mobilized today, and I believe they're going to continue until the sun goes down today. But as of right now, as of like right before I called you, 40, 40 some homes were approached already. And again, this is on a volunteer basis. We can't have, we can't force anybody to have their sure. homes sprayed. Yeah. And it does take me, it's, it's a, we are asking a few things from the, from the homeowner. It is free. It is free. Uh, this is done, this is allowed through. I know you're aware. Uh, executive order allows the transfer authority. Yeah. Uh, emergency procurement. And yes. so uh, we're we're doing that process. It's free of charge to the homeowner. They do have to vacate their home for a short period of time. Okay. Uh, it's about a three hour safety window. The springs though are very very quick. I mean, I can tell you that they did the whole campus. I believe Tom Nido uh, provided that information this afternoon at our most recent briefing. I think that's when you called me. Um, it took less than an, it took only a few hours to get the whole campus, and they were able to successfully do both indoors and outdoors. Thankfully, the rain held up today, and so the weather was definitely more conducive to, to spraying the school. How, how far, what's the reason for the 200 meter radius? Is it because that's how far a mosquito can travel? Um, I can't speak to that. Again, another technical question, but I know okay. that's what they identified as a high risk area. Okay, okay. And, and lastly, Crystal, uh, on the 12th, Public Health put out a fact sheet that said that no vaccine uh, is currently, currently exists against dengue, but then we found information from the CDC as of May 3rd okay. this year that I there is a vaccine. I, I overheard the epidemiologist do another interview, actually, and they were able to clarify that there is a dengue vaccine, but it's not available to us uh, according to the WHO standards. 
so 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 my so my question my so according to the CDC though the that vaccine was specifically developed for Guam and American Samoa. Okay. Well, so I, I would have to refer to the epidemiologist. It's a little bit technical question for me, but uh, I just understand that it's not available to us at this moment. Um, it's not available to us at this moment. Well, the 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 question that I do have the, the I, that was just the, the sort of uh, head up to the question. Okay. yeah yeah the the question is why didn't the governor or public health ordered this vaccine three weeks ago when we had our first suspected case of dengue. I don't have an answer for that. Can, 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 can we get a statement on that, please? So, re re reiterate your question one more time. Why did we order the vaccine? Why, why was it not ordered three weeks ago when the first suspected case of uh, dengue was confirmed? First suspect case, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Ten K was confirmed. Sorry, I have to call you from public health. No, no, that's fine. And they were using my phone for another interview. Um, Ten K was confirmed. Okay, I can get back to you. I have to defer to the experts uh, for environmental health and uh, to public health and their epidemiologists. Thank you very much. Yeah. No, no, You're that's welcome. good. That's good. Thank you. Thanks. So. Let's parse this out, uh, that interview with Crystal Paco. And we do thank her for providing. That was a lot of information that she did provide. It finally clarified many of the lingering questions that, well, sprouted since yesterday's 6.39 p.m. news from the Department of Education and Civil Defense about the spraying of insecticides at Agata Johnson and at Ordot Chalampago Elementary School. So on that last part where we asked her if she couldn't get a statement for us regarding why the vaccine was not ordered three weeks ago. Uh, here is a statement that she provided uh, at 9.27 p.m. She says, I was able to speak with the epidemiologist briefly relative to the vaccine you inquired about. I would prefer a direct quote from an expert, but in the interim, I wanted to let you know that the, va the vaccine you were referring to is one from the World Health Organization. As I understand, this vaccine does not meet U.S. standards and is causing, causing issues in the Philippines. I will work with the epidemiologist to get you an official response. Thank you for your patience. So, Crystal's half right. A vaccine was created that was causing some problems in the Philippines. And then, on May 3, 2019, the Centers for Disease Control, go ahead and cast back to my screen so people can see this. If you look at the bottom, content sources, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, National Center for Emerging and Zoonotic Infectious Diseases, Division of Vector-Borne Diseases. Uh, and in that second uh, stanza here under dengue vaccine in the United States, very clearly says, in May 2019, Dengvaxia was approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration in the United States for use in children 9 to 16 years old living in an area where dengue is common, the U.S. territories. So... Our government does not have it together. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm sorry to report that. The other part that should concern us is this. While there was a rather belated, though uh, I guess they made it just in time before the kids went back to school today, uh, they stopped the kids from going to school at Agata Johnson and at Ordot Chalampago Elementary School uh, in order to spray insecticide as of uh, late this afternoon, according to sources within Father Duane's Memorial School, that school had not received any information about the proximity uh, of this radius. Uh, they, they may actually be within the radius of Ground Zero, and, and they were not informed of anything. They were not offered to have any insecticide spraying at Father Duane's Memorial School. So that's, that is a developing story on its own. And whether if you are a parent of an FD boy, you may want to ask some questions before sending your kids to school tomorrow. Um, and lastly, lastly, there is all of this. You may be wondering, how does the government government af uh, affording the cost of all of this? They, they say it's not a fumigation. It's a spraying of insecticide. Well, for a 200-meter radius around Ground Zero in a heavily populated area like Mangilao in the area near Peles, uh, supermarkets. Oh, I well, I never go to Payless, but I, I, now I sure as hell wouldn't go to Payless in Manila. Um, 
that's a lot of spraying to do. And so it costs a lot of money. So we were wondering, in, in, in any emergency activation, there is a need for resources that were never budgeted for. And so what any governor would do during an, an emergency activation, depending on the severity of the case and how much in resources need to be spent, the governor would declare an emergency. And the declaration of emergency isn't meant to alarm people. What it's meant to do is to allow the governor to spend money, to transfer money and to spend money. Uh, normally, it's sole source procurement. Sometimes they have time to do three quotes. But uh, a lot of the times they have a a booklet of vendors that they can go to for very specific things. And so we ended up finding this emergency declaration. It was sent to the legislature. Hold on, let me just, let me grab it. Here, or you wanna put it up, right? Yeah, uh, is it in our WhatsApp? Just so people no, can see I it. opened it on messages and oh. communications. Okay, never mind. So there, an executive order was issued by the governor it was transmitted September 16, that's today, to Speaker Tina Mooney Barnes, uh, and it, but it wasn't signed today. No, this executive order was issued on Friday, the 13th of September. The governor had already set the stage for the purchase of these services from the fumigation company or from the insecticide company or whatever on Friday, didn't tell the schools until Sunday night and didn't tell the public where this thing was happening or that there was even a crisis outbreak or that the emergency operations center was partially activated until tonight. Yeah. Yet the governor, the lieutenant governor, and their staff, not even the Guam legislature, was made aware that an emergency declaration was made for this crisis on Friday the 13th. No, just the governor, the lieutenant governor, and their staff were made aware. And just so in case any of you believe in conspiracy theories, if you go to Benson or Home Depot, you'll notice that the over-the-counter type of insecticide that they sell that could kill the Asian tiger virus all of a sudden uh, no longer uh, is on the shelves. It was wiped out this weekend prior to anybody even knowing that there was this confirmed case or that the, that there was a crisis and that this student was not in quarantine. So, I don't know, maybe the 100 employees of the governor's office uh, wiped the shelves off, I'm not sure. Uh, we probably are not able to get the footage of who was buying the insecticide over at Benson at Home Depot, but there you have it. And how does that feel? So that's our story for the night. That's, that's how does that is. feel? I feel like a fucking second class goddamn citizen. That's what we are to this government. It is the government's failure to keep the public informed that leads to rumors. Crisis communication involves rumor control, but it is stopped by effective and timely release of information. This weekend, Friday, we had the trash cleanup, the Guam Beautiful Catalan task force um i went through facebook i went everywhere i asked questions where the fuck is our governor and why hasn't she addressed this you know how she gets on that picture behind her and she sits there with her little pretty suits and she addresses the public about what she's gonna do for the month right mm -hmm. where the fuck is she i don't know did, did you find her on facebook not nothing doing? was she out this weekend nothing well i bet you she was not in Manila. And I guarantee you her grandkids made it sure as hell shit didn't go anywhere either. But the rest of us didn't know where Ground Zero was. Nothing, Troy. Was there a Doni Festival in Minilao this yes. weekend? Yes, it, yes, there was. Wow. Nothing. Wow. I am pissed. I do not trust her. I do not trust. This is bullshit. She knew since Friday. Yeah, she issued that Troy, order. we only stumbled upon this because two agencies within the government of Guam gave out different information, and we discovered this Sunday night mm -hmm. during our live. Yeah, the bizarre news release from the Department of Education, and then the second one from Civil Defense. We're like, right. wait, wait, wait. You were, you were like, wait, wait, wait. Go back to that first news release. Right. Yeah, yeah.
So there, there you have it, Guam. This is how, how the government, governor of Guam is treating us. She ran away into her little den, not even the governor's house, because she doesn't live there, <laughs> because it's being renovated. Maybe that's why she hasn't been to civil defense that yet. Their, her, her and her staff was able to go over the... Okay, Candidate went today to buy pesticides. Okay? Because Troy gets really scared at things like this. I hate bugs. Okay? And according to the people at Benson and Home Depot, that specific pesticide was bought out this weekend before anyone knew before any of us could have a chance to fucking survive yeah how are you gonna take that we didn't even get a chance she didn't even give us a fucking chance mm -mm. i bet they're all stocked up though with their pesticides or insecticides I'm looking for I'm looking for the images that we had of what our governor and lieutenant governor were while Rome is burning, Nero is playing uh, her fiddle, right? Let them eat cake. So there were there were we have images of it's here. Let me get it. What our governor and lieutenant governor were doing as this crisis was developing, it, it, it's almost as though this is nothing to them. You have it. Oh, here you can, you can have some of my screen and I'll show you what civil defense was doing on Saturday the 14th. While they were not working <coughs> on this whole dengue thing, they were, uh, they were talking about earthquakes. What a great way to spend Saturday morning to celebrate National Preparedness Month, Guam Homeland Security Office of Civil Defense and AmeriCorps. Uh, visited the Guam Public Library to talk with parents and children about disaster preparedness. We even got to practice our earthquake drill together. Find out how you can prepare for all hazards at www.ghs.guam.gov. Nothing about dengue then. Uh, or the day before on Saturday or on Friday, September 13, when the emergency declaration was sent, allowing for the sole source procurement of that insecticide sprayer. Uh, this is what Homeland Security was doing. These are the people who are supposed to be protecting us. The offices of Guam Homeland Security and Civil Defense will host two incident command system training opportunities at the Port Authority of Guam Training Room PD. The courses follow. Oh, this is what, where Jenna was because she said she was in training. September 16th to the 18th, ICS 300 Intermediate ICS for Expanding Incidents. Hey, I have a suggestion for the Office of Civil Defense. Why don't you guys get off your asses and deal with this dengue situation? Because the time for academics is over. This is the time for actual implementation of what you guys spend all of your year learning. Like, what is what? What the hell is going on here? And then the, the they lieutenant also have a governor conference or right. t-shirt contest. The lieutenant governor was at the pick up the trash thing on Friday, and then on Saturday there was some kind of ball. I, I, I'm. Is this the island? Let, let, let me go to that. Island wide beautification. Uh, let me spell it correctly. I can't get into Josh's personal page because he blocked me because I kept tagging him in this bullshit. <laughs> oh, so while <laughs> check this out, while uh, they were issuing this emergency declaration Super on blocked. Friday the thirteenth, between two p.m. and six p.m. The governor and the lieutenant governor were leading a cleanup at Tengisin Beach, far away from Manilao, right? They're just picking up trash like uh, nothing was going on in this island regarding a public health outbreak. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You, you can cast on my screen so people can see all of this, all of this. Oh, my God. It's for the books, Troy. It's for the books. Oh, my goodness. Jesus Christ. All their, their photos. Now, oh, they're, they're, oh, their marble cave. That, that's kind of in Manila, but very far away from ground zero. 
They're at Pocket Cave. Jesus Christ. Uh, can you cast off my screen? Because I need to grab something from WhatsApp. Uh, it's coming. I, I want to show you that the these guys were in... There was a Lions, a Lions Club inauguration ceremony or something that the governor and lieutenant governor were at. The governor and lieutenant governor throughout this entire thing have been anywhere but leading this island out of this dengue crisis. Uh, and when we needed their leadership to prevent dengue from happening by quarantining that first person and then that second person, they failed both times. But the news of the night is the fact that this student is not under quarantine and that these mosquitoes have access to the student. And the fact that they didn't even give us a chance to let us buy our, let us save ourselves. I really feel like a fucking second class citizen. Maybe they think that like they, if they left enough off, you know that, that orange can, that it would be good enough for us second class citizens. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, this is not a, this is, this is, this is the worst governor in our history because this is the worst public health crisis in 75 years, Biba liberation. You know, um, when Crystal was talking about, you know, well, the, the, the spring is free, I would sure the fuck hope so. It's not free. You guys caused took, this problem. It's not free. They, had, they got emergency $250,000. Do not tell me it's free. Uh, what, <laughs> I was like... I was like, well, I guess Merry Christmas from the governor. We all get dengue from the governor. This, 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 this. Biba Guam. Here's dengue for free. That's the only thing free was the freaking dengue. National Mosquito Day was the day of the, of the, the news of the first um, suspected case of dengue. Now it's National Preparedness Month. Obviously, we can... We can give up on that. <laughs> now, I guess our I guess our photos are not coming in. <laughs> so, <sighs> all right. Well, the, the governor was at the Fenita conference or whatever that thing was. What the hell is that? The the decolonization whatever. Why didn't they just call it a decolonization conference? It's Fanjita. <laughs> okay. Well, if we all get dengue, we wouldn't, we're wouldn't. we not going to have a decolonization. Hita. Hita. Iman mosquito tanu. Guam, this is crazy. No thanks. No thanks. Okay, it's okay because I'm tired anyway, you guys. Yeah, is there anything else you want to talk about? Matt, you were getting mad earlier. I was super mad. I'm still mad. You, have to, you have to express it live I on did. the show. I did, I did. Man, you fucking wasted some of it then. I, I feel like a second-class citizen, honestly. And if all of you, this is, this is all of you, everybody who watches our show, everybody who doesn't watch our show, they knew since Friday since fucking Friday. We go today to check the pesticides and it's gone. They didn't give us a chance. <laughs> if that the place, doesn't... The place in the row of the, the, you know, the shelves and the, there's the yellow, there's the yellow like price tag. Like the whole thing is gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... It, it, it's like the it's like a row of Christine Calvo's favorite beer uh, on the day that she reloads, you know. Oh, the, they had a training to, oh, yeah? to detect for drugs. You know when they pull people, they had a I, oh like a DUI training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. And I just want to tell the the, uh, the the first lady, the um the former first lady, firm, former first lady. Thank you for she got pulled over. No, 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 no. They used her to check if they like. Um, she was the dummy. <laughs> so thank you for giving back to Guam. They used her as the to test to see if they'll if they could tell if she's drunk or what. 
Did it? Were they like, I have oh, a, you know, if they're well, going to do very realistic, no, ma'am. if they're going to have very another realistic. one, if they're going to have another one, I have a couple people, you know, <laughs> you know, whatever, if they're on drug, on drugs or on alcohol or, you know, on, on marijuana, like I, I, I have a couple volunteers, but, but I, I didn't have to have anybody come because the first lady was the, was oh, the dummy. Well, good. Well, good. <laughs> what, a, what a dummy she is. But you know what? Thank Chalo. you for your services. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Chalo? Like I'm, I'm, I'm kind of missing what Governor Eddie Calvo these days. I am too. Holy shit! This, the, this administration is something else, man. People need to get fired. I don't know about this governor, guys. If there's a war coming, she ain't gonna give a fucking two shits about us. They probably even won't warn us. Serious, Troy, on a serious She note, probably won't even be on our side. She probably be fucking out of here. <laughs> she is fucking, boom, out of here. Oh, my goodness. Do you want to go over our comments? Yeah, Gina said, she says, did you know there are cancer-causing agents in mosquito coil? That's why it was pulled off the shelves. I didn't know that. Man, we need some mosquito coils. <laughs> Just burn. worry about the cancer later. Burn the hus, the coconut hus. You have some outside. But we don't have any more coconut trees because of the rhino beetle. rhino beetle. Well, then Guam, you're fucked. Good job, Governor. The Lou flu. Um, hi, Auntie Janice. Roberta Mendoza says that specific pesticide can only be found at Home Depot. Oh, it's an insecticide. No, uh, also Benson, but not anymore. <laughs> yeah, you can't find it anymore. Go, go to the governor's house and ask if he can borrow some of her stock. Um, Amy says, I have symptoms of dengue. Don't say that. Um, let's see. Gina says, have the kids wear long sleeve jackets, long pants, socks to cover their ankles. And if you can spray them with some insect repellent before leaving the school, that is the best way to protect them. Mm -hmm. That and vote for a new governor. Um... Isn't that, there's no law that says she needs to inform the public? How does this work? Human decency, I would suppose. Like, like, I don't know. I don't think we've ever had a situation like this before. I don't think we've ever had a situation where we've had an inept governor. Like, like I don't think she was ready to govern. And everybody that, was, that we tried to get a hold of today, they could not answer anything. They, they don't know how to govern, Chella. They, they, they're incapable of governing. Um, We're all going to die, guys. <laughs> I'm not ready to die yet. I didn't do enough good, you know? I, I'm, I, wanna, I wanna make my mark. I'm not ready to die. Man, I have the exact like opposite way of thinking. <laughs> it. I'm not ready to die because I haven't done enough bad. <laughs> like, no, I've done enough bad. I'm ready to, you know? I'm I wanna just kidding, leave guys. my mark. I wanna, I wanna be able to close my eyes and say, okay, Johnny, you did what you needed. You did everything you could. It's all in God's time, Shalu. It really is. But we're not going to... I ain't fucking dying to I mean, no goddamn mosquito. That's embarrassing. <laughs> that's not gangster at all, Chalu. That is not gangster at all. Um, Mel Skilling says to Gina, oh, my kid, my kitties go there. I, are they talking about Price Elementary? Because that's in Manila as well. Uh, oh, a Amy Jackson's son is Chaiti. Is that Price Elementary? Yeah, I think they're talking about Price. Um, a lot of our friends... Our friends' kids go there. That's their area. Amy said, Donny Festival, rain, mosquitoes, crowds of people. What the fuck? Mm -hmm. Guys, Amy doesn't have bad grammar. She just has bad eyes. So she <laughs> and fat fingers. <laughs> um, Gina says, I kept thinking about the boonies behind the school and all the standing water from all the rain over these past days, and I felt it was not safe to keep the kids outside and being exposed to mosquitoes. My goodness. Yeah, man, I, I feel I have to go outside and smoke cigarettes. I'm not, I'm not liking that. I like, I, feel, I automatically feel itchy. Prim, can you please take that picture off the mosquito? Because it's really, it's, I feel like it's crawling on me. But you guys know what that mosquito. You guys have seen that mosquito. It's yes. very, yeah. Yes. Um. Amy says, "Bet they got all the mosquito coil." <laughs> Hi, Lynn's Hi, Dinko. Gina says someone's making some good money off that insecticide thing. Yeah. 
Oh, Gina says, oh, crap, there goes our Section 30 money. Oh, it, it's the, there's a limit of, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's $250,000 is the limit per emergency declaration. Yeah, it said that in that declaration that she signed on the 13th. It said $250,000. $250,000. Yeah, that's the legal limit. So, oh, what is this? <laughs> Let me sign that. It's Friday. Oh, my God, it's almost 5 o'clock. Oh, hurry up. Sign <laughs> that. Um... Gina asks, what is the harm in putting the victim in quarantine? It is the most cautious and proactive action that can be taken. Gina, can you please call the territorial epidemiologist and the director of public health? And after you cuss them out and tell them to resign, can you let them know what you're saying? Because, I mean, it makes sense to every reasonable person on this earth, except to our director of public health, our governor, and the territorial epidemiologist, who, by the way, isn't even an MD. We got our CV earlier today. And the only on-the-field practical experience she had, according to her CV, was in 1980 as a census enumerator. She has been a university researcher for between that time and the time she left Hawaii to come work, to work in Guam as a territorial epidemiologist. And she has a PhD, not a medical degree, just, just so you all know. All right, guys, I need to eat spaghetti, and it's been night, and there's a lot of work left to do uh, to finalize this show and to prepare for tomorrow. Do you have anything else, Chandler? We, Thanks, Governor. <laughs> I'm not going to do trash talk. You know, this, I'm, I'm lazy. Yeah, thank, thank you, Governor. Thank you. <laughs> we appreciate the early Christmas gift, Governor. This dengue is wonderful. Thank you. We love you, Guam. We love you, Guam. <laughs> 